Hey Creekside Bridge Kids, it's Miss Carly and I'm coming to you again outside this week. This time I'm at my house in my backyard and we have a Bible story that you might have heard before. It's a pretty classic one and it's from Luke chapter 19. So if you have your normal Bible, this is me, I have my regular Bible, it's super cute. Um, if you have your regular Bible, get it out and go to Luke 19. If you like the Jesus Storybook Bible or you have younger siblings, who are following along with our Creekside reading plan, then that would be the Jesus Storybook Bible called um, The Man with No Friends. That's the one we're doing this week. So once you get to Luke 19, you can pause this if you need to, and then once you get to Luke 19, we'll start reading together. So here we go. Luke 19, and we're gonna re read verses one through 10. So here we go. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and they began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because of this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. So this is a cool story and it's interesting. There's some little funny parts that I think kids always remember like Zacchaeus being too short to see over the crowd. You guys know what that's like if you've been in a crowd of adults and you're like, I can't see anything. This is a bummer to be short at this moment. <laughs> so that's how, how Zacchaeus felt. He was, you know, wanting to see Jesus. He was curious about Jesus. Jesus was super cool and he was super interesting and people wanted to hear what he was saying and he was kind of like blowing people's minds with his teaching he was also doing things that the religious people didn't expect so people kind of were like what's going on with this guy so Zacchaeus wants to see it he gets out there there's a crowd he can't see he climbs a tree this all makes sense to us especially those of us who are kids or remember very clearly what it's like to be a kid however maybe for a grown man it's kind of funny to see a guy climbing a tree I don't know what you think you would react in that situation. But anyway, he climbs the tree. Jesus walks up. I think he's assuming that Jesus isn't going to notice him because he's up in the tree and Jesus has a bunch of people all around him. So Jesus has a crowd. Doesn't, he knows the crowd is there, but out of everyone he could talk to in this crowd, he knows Zacchaeus is in the tree and he calls him out and says, Hey, I'm coming to your house tonight. <laughs> and what's funny is we know Jesus because we've read a lot of stories about him. So we know that Jesus often hung out with people who maybe other weren't very popular. Um, so we know that this is normal for Jesus. At that time, they were expecting Jesus to only want to hang out with the religious people and maybe only want to hang out with the really important people, like people who the society had decided were important. Well, Zacchaeus was important in terms of he had an important government job where he was, his job was to, to collect money from all the people, taxes. I don't know if you guys know what taxes are. You can ask your parents if you need more of an explanation on that, but it's money that you give your government so that they can do things that the government does like, you know, firefighters and police officers and keeping the roads nice and all the things that the government does for the people. So. Zacchaeus would go around and collect all the money from the people, but a lot of tax collectors at that time who did this job, they collected more money than they were supposed to, and then they kept it for themselves. So they got rich really easily because their job was to collect money and the people would say, okay, how much money do I give you? And they would ask for more and take more than they really were supposed to. And so they were stealing basically. So they had a bad reputation. Everyone assumed Jesus would not be hanging out with the tax collectors. Like, why would Jesus hang out with a thief is what they're thinking. He would want to hang out with the cool, not cool, but like the important religious people. Well, Jesus breaks everyone's expectations and he says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house tonight. So what I think is really cool and interesting about this is things we can understand as kids about this. First of all, most of us know what it's like to feel lonely and to feel like you don't have a friend. You know, I... 
I made friends easily, but you know, when you're new at a school, it just takes time to make friends. So I remember being new at a school and being really nervous about making friends. And it took a while to, I eventually had friends, but it takes some time and it's not fun to feel lonely. It's not fun to feel like people aren't interested in you. Um, some of you may have had even the more extreme experience of like being bullied, or maybe you know someone who's been bullied where you're lonely and it's because someone is being bad to you. You know, there's, there's a lot of loneliness out there. Um, you might feel lonely in your home because you don't have, um, you know, a brother or a sister that you wish you had. And, you know, if you're a, a girl and you have only brothers, you might feel kind of lonely. Or if you're a boy and you have only sisters, you might feel kind of lonely. There's a lot of different ways you can feel loneliness, even when you're with people. And Zacchaeus was, worked with people and he lived in a community, but people didn't like him because he, if he took more money from people, um, even just taking their money in general, if he was doing his job right, people just didn't like him. He didn't have a good reputation. So that's something that we can connect to is understanding how Zacchaeus felt. Another thing we can connect to and something that we can really try to remember in our hearts is that Jesus did not care that he had a bad reputation. Jesus did not think, oh, Zacchaeus has a bad reputation, therefore I won't hang out with him. He knew everything about Zacchaeus. He knew if he stole, he knew that he had a bad reputation. And he purposefully even sought out the person who had a bad reputation and said, I want to hang out with you. And so that's just beautiful. You know, we can soak in that. We can remember, like, even if we're feeling like, uh, my people in my life aren't loving me very well, or I don't have very good friends, or I'm feeling lonely right now. We can remember that Jesus never thinks about us. Oh, you have a bad reputation or, oh, you're not the smartest kid in your class or, oh, you messed up a few times this week with your siblings. He never thinks, oh, therefore I'm not gonna hang out with you. He thinks always, I will pursue you. It does not matter to Jesus how many times we have messed up. He still wants us and he still wants to connect with us and be friends with us. So that's a cool thing to remember. Another thing that's interesting is that he said, um, you know, after Jesus was kind to him and initiated with him, um, he said, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. This is in verse eight. So can you imagine half of your possessions? Like look around, if you're in your room right now, look around your room and think about giving away half of everything you own like half of my clothes, half of my shoes, half of your toys, half of your, um, I don't know, what's precious, what's expensive that you guys probably have? Half of your video games, half of your, um, like if you have awesome scooters or bikes, like stuff like that. Zacchaeus, when he felt Jesus's love and he felt Jesus's attention, he wasn't just happy, he was even inspired to give away things he had. And then he said, and if I've cheated my people out of money, I'll pay them. I don't just pay them back. I'll pay them four times the amount that I took. So clearly Jesus did something to him. Jesus inspired him. And what I like to think of is one of my favorite words this year is the word generous. That's kind of like my word for the year. I want to be generous and not just generous with my stuff like Zacchaeus was in this situation. I want to be generous with my love. I want to be generous with my kindness. I want to be generous with the way that I encourage people. Um, and this is what's cool to see is that Jesus was generous with his love. He said, Zacchaeus, you're the least popular person in this group right here, and I'm still going to go hang out with you. And Jesus was generous towards Zacchaeus. And then that inspired Zacchaeus himself to be generous. Not only is he going to pay back for the things he messed up, he's going to pay back four times the amount and give half of his possessions to the poor. Like in that moment, that's like Jesus's generosity and kindness and love inspired Zacchaeus to not only love it and receive it and understand that Jesus was really special, but then he took it and he also became generous himself because of what the Lord had done for him. And that's something we can try to do whenever you experience something or learn something about God and you realize something amazing and great about him, if it's possible, you can try to then let that change you. Just be open to letting that change you and maybe become like Jesus and some of the great things he did. He was kind. He was, um, he was brave. He was courageous. He was tough. 
Um, he was smart, but he was always good. Um, you can just take all of those things and go, you know what I see Jesus doing right here? I see this. And you go, you know what? Jesus was so good. I want to be good. Or Jesus was so generous. I want to be generous. Jesus was so um, bold. I want to be more bold. Or, you know, you can do any of those things. You can, anything you see Jesus doing, you can just think, just be open to the thought that maybe you could be somewhat like Jesus yourself. So, um, and you know, we're not, we're going to try to be like Jesus and we're going to fail because it's hard to work on something and change and recognize something that you want to do, but you just haven't practiced doing it a lot. That's going to take time. It's going to take a little, you're going to mess up here and there, but it's cool to think that like, as people who love Jesus, we're always kind of slowly but surely moving in the direction of being more like him. And that just makes God happy. And that um, makes people think about um, God when they see you changing because of God. It makes them consider God. And it's just got, it's got a beautiful um, quality to it. And it also has a beautiful like effect out into the world. Do you guys know what the ripple effect is? Like when you drop a rock in water and you see all the ripples go out? That's a concept that adults use a lot of like, Jesus dropped generosity here, which inspired Zacchaeus, which probably inspired others, which also made other people think, I wonder who this Jesus is. And it's a, they call it a ripple effect because the original action caused a bunch of different cool reactions as it went out from the center source. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you guys are having a great week and I will see you next week or maybe Mr. T. I don't know who's gonna teach next week online, but. We'll see, you'll see someone on here giving you a great lesson from the Bible because God is good. All right. Bye, guys.